Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Amy Myers Jaffe. I am a research professor here at the NYU School of Professional Studies, and I welcome you to this course pop up, uh, which would give you a snippet uh, for a course I'll be teaching this fall in 2023 on clean technology, uh, trends and opportunities. And uh, this semester, I am teaching a course on global climate finance, uh, which will then extend into a summer intensive course uh, in June uh, on the same topic uh, as an advanced colloquium. So I uh, look forward to um, uh, more to come, as they say. So I'm gonna talk today about a little bit about um, US corporates and uh, how their renewable energy strategies are developing and what is the role of uh, digital innovation in that process. To begin, uh, I think we need to set the context for uh, the push to renewable energy uh, among US corporates, uh, because it began really with um, the trend towards uh, net zero commitments. And that began with uh, uh, the Paris Accord and intensified uh, at Glasgow and again in Egypt with the Conference of the Parties, where seven countries, I'm sorry, where 70 countries, including uh, the three biggest global emitters, the United States, China, and the EU, have uh, set net zero target uh, for their entire economy. Uh, in the case, uh, somewhere between the years uh, 2050 and uh, 2060. So along that same trend line, uh, we have had 1,200 companies announce that they too are committing to have their operations uh, be consistent uh, with net zero by 2050 and uh, have agreed to use science-based targets in determining um, uh, whether their emissions and uh, energy use, et cetera, are in uh, alignment uh, with net zero. So, I think our first step is to make sure we have a co common understanding of uh, what net zero means, um, because you hear a lot of terminology, carbon neutral, climate neutral, uh, climate positive or cl carbon negative. Um, and all of those uh, have a slight different nuance in terms of how offsets uh, will be used. So an offset would be a credit that would be purchased either in the voluntary market or uh, an investment that uh, creates a, a carbon sink, say investments in reforestation or restoration of wetlands um, or something much more proactive like the installation of machinery to do carbon, uh, direct carbon capture, uh, like has been announced by the oil company Occidental Petroleum. So Occidental Petroleum's plan is to um, take carbon out of the atmosphere and thereby uh, ensure that any emissions that they can eliminate operationally will be um, offset or, or corrected uh, by uh, using direct air capture to take carbon out of the atmosphere. So for net zero, when we're talking about understanding uh, the definition, we're talking about companies making their best efforts to reduce all methane and uh, greenhouse gas emissions um, as much as possible. And then agreeing that uh, for that residual amount that they cannot eliminate operationally, uh, they will engage in uh, carbon removals. That is, they're going to go and uh, uh, tap a technology that's carbon negative. In other words, uh, a carbon sink or, or some technology like carbon sequestration and storage uh, connected with biofuels so that you're getting a negative emission, right? So not just uh, carbon neutral where I'm gonna make it flat, where I'm going to, I'm gonna emit, you know, 10 tons of carbon, but I'm gonna uh, reforest a certain part of the Amazon and that's going to uh, also absorb 10 ton, uh, tons of carbon, but actually have it be negative where I'm going to um, uh, have a, 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 a process where I'm literally taking carbon out of the atmosphere. Now, 
the need for renewable energy uh, globally is huge. It's a huge business opportunity um, and, and also you know, an imperative. Uh, we've had an, a stellar year in 2022, um, partly because of high energy prices and also because tremendous amount of government intervention in markets with stimulus packages like the US Inflation Reduction Act and the EU Green New Deal. Um, these kind of policies have made it a bumper year uh, for the installation of renewables and 340 gigawatts of power uh, was installed in 2022. Um, but when you look at that investment level that was associated with those additions of, of electricity, um, you had about for dollar per dollar spend about 1.5 uh, to one ratio uh, compared with uh, fossil fuel investment levels. Uh, but what we need to get to is a nine to one ratio by 2030 um, to be consistent with our goals for a 1.5 degree uh, Celsius pathway. Uh, so we're really having a big heavy lift here to get renewables investment to the scale that's needed to meet the climate crisis. Uh, Currently, renewables are about 30% of global electricity generation. Uh, we need that to get to 60% by 2030 to be on track uh, to stabilize uh, global temperatures. So as you can see from this slide, uh, in 2022, uh, we had about 50 gigawatts of clean energy procurement deals. Um, done by corporations all around the world. Um, and you can see some of the leading um, corporations that are active uh, in that pursuit, Amazon, Microsoft, um, Alcoa Steel, uh, Facebook, Meta, uh, Google, and so forth, um, and Verizon. So this chart is telling you, you know, who, who is most active uh, in this clean energy uh, market buying solar energy, buying wind energy, uh, supporting installations um, uh, across the across the spectrum of the clean energy business. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what motivates them. So, first and foremost, uh, we've had incredible drop uh, in the cost um, of renewable energy. Uh, and then, of course, on top of that drop, we've had now new tax credits, and we've had previous tax credits um, that were in place. And so um, that's a incentive uh, to corporations to lock in uh, renewable energy uh, to actually lower their energy costs um, to their operations, particularly important for uh, for the data providers, for Microsoft and Google and others that have cloud services, um, because data centers are quote unquote energy hogs. That uh, takes a huge amount of energy, huge amount of electricity uh, to run data centers. And indeed, um, it has to be very good energy uh, because you know if their data center goes down, you and I would have trouble going to the bank or you know doing all kinds of things that were all using uh, the cloud for. So, um, you know, big area for, um, for renewable energy, just based on being able to lower the overall cost for, for electricity. Now, the tax credits in the United States that are gonna come from the Inflation Reduction Act uh, make the levelized cost of, of electricity from renewables very competitive uh, with fossil fuels. And the, it added, um, it reduced the cost of the energy portion for say a corporation buying solar uh, by an additional 41% uh, for onshore wind down another 57%. So, um, and also a little bit helpful to storage. We're still not quite, I think where we need to be to have storage be a really competitive, competitive uh, uh, commercial cost, but but it's it's getting close. And of course, as we have volatility in U.S. natural gas prices, having to do with exports and um, and demand and heat waves and so forth, 
uh, the higher the price for traditional energy, uh, the more compelling it is uh, to put in storage, especially to handle at uh, times of peak oil, I'm sorry, times of peak electricity demand, which as you know, is between uh, four and six or 7 p.m. when everyone is back at home, residential demand goes up, um, and we need to have very solid supplies uh, 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 to handle that period of time. So I mentioned that uh, data centers are big uh, consumers interested in renewable energy. Um, one thing that uh, data centers can do is position themselves uh, to use renewable energy that is curtailed at a particular time of day. So for example, uh, with solar, there's something called the duck curve where the production of solar energy is highest midday, you know, noontime, uh, and then starts to drop off when you unfortunately get to peak demand at, you know, five or 6 p.m. So a lot of times you're having a very low price uh, in the market uh, for solar in the middle of the day. And so data center companies can shift their load uh, to solar resources uh, regionally um, at times when uh, that electricity is, is very, cost is very low. Um, and then of course, wind energy is most plentiful in the evening. So again, an opportunity. Um, but the other thing that's happening is that uh, traditional energy companies and also utilities are uh, interested in adding solar to power their operations um, on facility. So we call that captive power, where you're having a dedicated solar plant um, near a, a production facility or a factory or so forth. Uh, and that is so that they can meet uh, uh, ways to lower their carbon footprint intensity. Uh, in a place like China, uh, they now have um, a new uh, restrictions, a cap on uh, carbon intensity of operations for electricity plants. Um, and so um, that's gonna be explicitly regulated in a compliance market. Uh, California has a compliance market that goes across several uh, aspects of the economy. And so again, uh, adding solar power to your operations if you're operating in California uh, can be beneficial for how you would comply with uh, lowering the carbon intensity of your operations, even in oil and gas production. Um, and uh, other kinds of operations uh, in the United States. Uh, you're seeing companies add solar power um, instead of using diesel generation as a way of lowering the carbon footprint um, of their production. And, um, and then also in markets where like California, like the Reggie exchanges in New England um, and in the EU, uh, carbon pricing uh, influences uh, the attractiveness of renewable energy uh, for corporate buyers uh, because uh, they can um, earn a carbon credit or they can avoid uh, a carbon price uh, by uh, increasing their take of renewables. Um, and then also, especially uh, here in the United States, the renewable portfolio standard um, uh, and earlier uh, before uh, when they had it, the feed-in tariff in Europe uh, often made meant that uh, renewable energy uh, was desirable in particular location. So one of the interesting players in the renewable energy space uh, today is uh, Google, and they initiated the 277 Carbon Free Energy Compact, which is a plan to match electricity procurement uh, and consumer demand um, with the hopes of building out uh, much more commercial demand for storage and hydrogen uh, combined with wind renewables. And they, um, they've uh, moved, I mean, originally some of the companies like Google, Microsoft, et cetera, were, were really just buying renewable energy credits um, as a way of decarbonizing their operations, but now, uh, companies like Google have switched from this sort of generalized uh, way to offset their fossil fuel purchasing to actually using nearby renewable energy resources uh, at the and, and building their facilities uh, contiguous. So Google, for example, has seven 
uh, gigawatts of purchasing power agreements um, to buy renewable energy, uh, mostly in the United States, but to a lesser extent in Europe. Um, and, and their aim is to get to 100% renewables physically in their operations uh, worldwide. So, um, you know, as a business model, um, you know, how is that going to manifest itself? Well, the other thing it can be connected to um, is a plan uh, to sell smart thermostat devices. Some of you may have heard of Nest and know that uh, the Nest product uh, has a renewable energy uh, version where you can program it uh, using AI to, um, to have your optional appliances uh, only be used when uh, uh, there's high renewable output. Um, so this, uh, this diagram here and this last slide um, shows you how uh, the load and availability of uh, renewable energy shifts during the day and into the nighttime. Um, and, and Google and others, uh, you know, think Alexa and, uh, and some of these other products where you can speak to it and you can tell it uh, to um, do your laundry or some of your more optional or turn off your air conditioning when you're not home and then turn it back on when renewable energy is available. Um, some of these smart thermostats are going to be a major digital driver um, to allowing um, uh, energy load to, to match with uh, the ups and downs of renewable energy. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to see if you have uh, any questions. If you do, you can put them in the Q&A uh, segment uh, on your screen. Okay, well with that, I thank you for your attendance today and uh, look forward to seeing you at another pop-up course soon. Thanks very much.